Welcome back guys and if it's your first time here my name is Sukra and I do videos about modern and retro computer hardware and games. In this video we're going to talk about power supplies and throughout the video I'm going to point out the most important aspects of a PSU and what you should know. Last week we did the first video of the Hot Rod PC that I'm going to leave the card on the top right corner of the video if you want to check it out. It's a cool computer with parts from 2004 and we left it off at a place where it could use some upgrades. One of the things I want to change there is the PSU. I want to get a newer power supply in there to preserve the system, make it more stable and provide enough power for SLI and overclocking the Athlon 64 3000 plus. But instead of just buying a PSU for an old computer, I bought a replacement for my main computer, the editing PC, and I'm going to pass its modern PSU down to the hot rod PC. The editing PC uses a Cougar Gemini M case that I also made a video about and you can check it out by clicking on the link on the top right corner again if you so desire. The reason for the upgrade of the PSU on my daily PC is that I had two friends that recently lost their Ryzen CPUs because of bad PSUs and my power supply is in the limit right now with 500 watts for a Ryzen 1800X, a GTX 1080 and a bunch of hard drives, so yeah. Better be safe than sorry and get that new PSU. Alright, so the PSU I'm taking out of the system is made by Aeroku. Not a fancy PSU by any means, one of the cheapest I could find at the time. It's a 500 watt PSU with 20 amps on the 3.3 and 5 volt rail and 37 amps on the 12 volt rail. Furthermore, it has the 80 plus bronze certification and we'll get more into that in a bit. The new PSU is an XPG core reactor of 650 watts. So XPG is a recent brand name, but it's actually a new division of an old brand. The RAM memory and SSD maker you probably know called ADATA. This PSU has a steep price for my taste, but besides the 650 watts, the fact that it's modular and the stability reported by Tom's hardware, it has a 10 year warranty and I'm looking forward to those 10 years without having to worry about the PSU, so that makes it worth it for me. For the electrical current distribution, it has 20 amps in the 5 volt rail, 20 amps in the 3.3 volt rail, and a massive 54.1 amps in the 12 volt rail. These are the most important specs, especially the 12 volt rail, because that is where your processor and your video card are going to be pulling current from. So there are two main things you are going to look for and that is how many amps your PSU provides in the rails that are important to your needs and how stable that current can be maintained. Because remember, the PSU converts alternate current from the wall socket to direct current in your computer and you're going to want that direct current with the least amount of fluctuation possible. Tom's Hardware did a very detailed review of this unit with load regulation and efficiency tests in several different conditions. If you're interested in that, I recommend you check that out. Before buying this particular PSU, it's exactly what I did and I'll leave the link to that on the description. Something else about PSUs is that they can have multiple 12 volt rails or a single one concentrating the maximum amount of current. PSUs with multiple 12 volt rails will need to have regulators for each of the rail, making them more expensive but also a bit safer, as there is weaker current on each rail instead of one really strong one. As an enthusiast, I've always liked PSUs with a single 12 volt rail because that way you have more current available instead of having it divided between multiple rails and possibly hitting a wall on one of those lower current rails. Gladly, it seems that the single rail trend is back. Okay, I guess I should talk about one last aspect and that is the 80 plus certification. To put it simply, this certification is a guarantee that your PSU is not wasting a lot of energy in the process of converting the AC current to the DC current and providing that to your PC. There are six levels of efficiency and these are 80 plus standard, 80 plus bronze, 80 plus silver, 80 plus gold, 80 plus platinum and 80 plus titanium. So the higher efficiency level, the less energy you waste and to tell you the truth, 80 plus standard would have been enough for my use. So the 80 plus gold on the core reactor PSU means that it's doing its work with at least 87% of efficiency. And that is just a bonus. 
According to the 80 plus gold rating, the PSU must have over 90% efficiency on 50% load. And according to the PSU calculator on outerworlds.com, which I'll link in the description, the editing PC is at about 387 watts, and that's 59% of the new PSU's 650 watts. So we should have close to its maximum efficiency of 90%. So the new PSU is in and I guess we're really going to find out if it's good over the years. I never had a problem with the PSU before and I fully expect to use this one for at least 10 years. Most importantly, now I have an extra PSU that is reasonably new and modern to use in the hot rod PC and I hope that you got some useful information out of this video or at least had some fun. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video and I'll see you next time.